if I took away your beautiful and exciting addictions, gentlemen, I ask you, would you finally be free and happy? Or would you be lost, or worse, in hell? Okay, uh, preface. I'm ruminating in this video and playing devil's advocate in the hopes of men looking honestly at themselves in light of some of the things I ask. We're just having a chat over drinks, fellas, so relax. Okay, good. So here's a question for you. Would you, if you had the choice, control and master your opponent or destroy them completely? Does your enemy, kept alive, keep you sharp, keep you conscious? An interesting thought. If you defeat your addiction, sex, women, drugs, alcohol, whatever your Achilles heel, do you feel empty or a little lost afterwards? No idea what to do next? As Charles Bukowski once wrote about the pompous and rich, he observed, quote, with nothing to struggle against, they have nothing to live for, unquote. And remember the scene in the Dark Knight movie where Batman asked the Joker, why are you trying to kill me? To which the Joker replies, kill you? I don't want to kill you. You complete me. So what, as a man, would you do if you killed your so-called enjoyable opponent, sex, and your desire for women? What would you do with it gone, if you could? If you could, would you have an operation to cut a wire in your brain that would delete your sexual desire completely? The instant red pill for most of men's problems, if you will. And if you severed it, what else might be severed in the process? These are important philosophical questions to ponder in the mirror as an honest self-analysis. The amount of times I hear married men say, Human, I wish I never got married. But then I see the way they dote and literally breathe for their wives and kids. And even I know that the institutionalization that they are now hardwired into as husbands is real. I mean, it would kill them if they were unplugged from that matrix. You think it was hard for Neo to be unplugged being a little older? <laughs> a married man with kids is at least 500 fucking years old. There's no chance he's getting unplugged cleanly from that reality. Not without a lobotomy. A friend of mine years ago was telling me how he was casually seeing a few women at the same time, to which I said to him, women take up all your time then, they rule your life, don't they? And he suddenly realized what I was implying and responded, what are you talking about? I'm in control, I have them all on a string. Really, I said, you're addicted, you wouldn't know what to do without pussy. And he said, look, if I could fuck a different woman every day, then that would be a perfect life to me. And I laughed. Is that all you want to do with your life? Fuck women, I said. To which he replied, Well, what else is there? And that honest moment by my friend is what many guys are. Without any purpose other than women, men keep throwing all their eggs into her basket for some kind of meaning to it all. So this brings me to a man's hunger for sex, literally like a hunger for food. How does one choose healthier or safer sex as male nutrition? Is it even possible? Aside from abstinence, it seems that the only really safe way is porn or sex dolls. And given most men require some semblance of authenticity for sex to mean anything, how does one do it? Again, if you could sever the lust for sex, say via medical procedure, would you? Think about it. How often do we prolong masturbation while watching porn for hours, willfully prolonging the narcotic and fantasy state? abating climax just to keep the euphoric sensation going. We love staying in that place. We know we could just get it over with quickly and have a clear mind afterwards and then get on with the day, but we don't. Is it laziness? In knowing that with no excuses left, no sex or women to blame, that most men in fact wouldn't be motivated to do much of anything at all. Again, would you be able to be happy without sex? If you could sever the desire completely, what would your joy then be? Would other pleasures in life be enough as an alternative to women and sex? What would you do? Honestly, what would drive you? What would you be excited for or look forward to? And before you bravely state, Oh, it would be great to be free of that burden. Just entertain past real life experiences for a moment. The times when you wished for something and then got it and how it wasn't what you expected. I personally remember times I wish I didn't have to work anymore at a job I hated. Then once I actually saved up enough money throughout the year and bit the bullet and took a year off work, thinking I could finally be productive in my passions and write and create to my heart's content. I didn't. 
overall, I was slothful and truthfully a little lazy. I have to admit, I learned personally that I needed a different balance to be productive and happy in my life. I needed my personal fight club, as I call it, my things to fight for, not artificial, but real and meaningful, a reason to get up in the morning. I learned that my reasons, like plants, need both sunshine and rain in allocated slots to flourish, not just sunshine. And without being led by another's purpose, what is your purpose? What mountains do you climb? What is your Everest? As I mentioned in my previous A Man's Everest video, do you have one? And most importantly, most importantly, what perfect weather do you require in your life to have your mountains climbable? Is your fighting against the desire for sex and the female inherent therein part of the push-pull pleasure for you, the sadomasochistic interplay? Be honest, you may get off on it. The male victory inherent in the thrill of the chase and the primal devouring of a woman once caught can be hardwired and exciting. Put another way, if there's no challenge to the driven man, what would he do with a passive woman? Or yet another way, are you a disciplined person that can eat a clean diet 100% of the time or do you need to indulge once in a while to feel like you're living and balanced? Know thyself, as the saying goes. Do you tell yourself that women are your occasional donut in an otherwise strict diet of rational self-interest? Or let's be honest, are you only occasionally eating a healthy salad while your staple is really just junk food? As humans, we often need a health scare, so to speak, to finally scare us into getting fit relationship-wise especially. TFM has mentioned this often in videos where he talks of people not changing until pain actually hits. And what about love, you say? Well, love and desire have been responsible for the worst atrocities in history. I would contend that you know yourself and have the courage to make principal choices. I would argue that knowing yourself and having the courage to make principal choices is the most honest assessment of what real love should be. As Stephen Molyneux has said many times, love is the involuntary response to virtue. And to fellow men, let me just say, the red pill is only uncovering truths. You decide if those truths are profound or essential enough to warrant change in your life. And look, upon ingesting the red pill, the experience is seldom, if ever, comfortable or immediately liberating. The red pill is essentially tough love. Liberation may come afterwards, may come way after. Stardust video, The Red Pill and the Problem of Philosophical Course Correction, link below. He highlights the often false axiom that upon taking the red pill, one is set free. This is far from true, as he states. It's like looking at celebrities and only looking at the successful and shiny exceptions. Men gravitate toward the red pill for immediate relief, but the red pill is mostly anything but instant relief. The red pill is more analogous to training for Mr. Olympia as an overweight 40-year-old man after you've had a heart attack and your doctor's told you you've got one year to live or else. The common stages after one awakens to the red pill is 1. Shock, bitterness and anger, which the majority of MGTOW still stay in. 2. The acceptance phase. And 3 only rarely, the transcendence into self-determined contentment, the path toward becoming Morpheus or Yoda, if you will. But getting to this path is a long road, never immediate, and you're always learning. In truth, you never really get there, but you feel like you found the right path. Post-red pill is the road of frankness and introspection. The red pill is easier if you're not gregarious, the intellectually curious person has an easier time of it too, I'd say, and if you are optimistic or have a strong will to freedom, you're even luckier. One thing is common though, post-red pill awakenings, such as MGTOW, tend to have an ascetic bar set as its horizon to a degree. And sure, the red pill and MGTOW sounds romantic, but if you've gone from a romantic relationship that just destroyed you and are still wallowing in the same romantic mindset in relation to MGTOW or the red pill saving you, you'll be eaten alive by your own mind. Trust me. As my favorite German silverback, Stardust, puts it, the red pill isn't for every man. The red pill is a blunt reality. Tough love, if you will, nothing more. What you decide to do after swallowing it, well... As Stanislaw Lem puts it, there are no answers, only choices. And if that excites you, then the red pill might just help you. Whatever you decide, go your own way, gentlemen. Later. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, or Patreon my videos. Thanks.